Hey, how's it going? It's time for another video review uh, for a watch that I got. And it's it's been a long time coming, I guess, like a lot of other watches, actually. <laughs> but anyways, this is the, um, let's get right into it. This is the Seiko Prospects SRPG 59K1. It is part of the uh, special editions of uh, Save the Ocean um, models. And... They've had several variations of these over the years, and uh, this one, I believe there was a monster that came out as well with this one. Uh, don't think there was another one, maybe a samurai, but um, at least this and a and a uh, monster. And they both had this kind of ice blue dial that's got this uh, gradient effect around the edge where it's darker. And if you look closely, um, the star of the show is that uh, nice frosty icy texture to the dial and it's quite dynamic as you may see um, just depending on the angle of the light maybe even the quality of the light um, you tend to get a little bit brighter or darker so it shifts quite a bit and of course um, part of the um, besides this texture they usually at least they have been <clears throat> um, imprinting like uh, little details into the texture work, and then these in this series they did like the penguin feet. So this is the Antarctica edition of the Save the Ocean special edition, and you can see it says that uh, somewhere here it's just special edition right under here. And uh, yeah, this is um, uh, basically the Seiko Tuna. This is like the smaller or Tuna light. I don't even know what people officially call this now. It's not. This goes by so many names. I just call this a mini turtle. I guess uh, it's forty-three millimeters, which is pretty good considering um, how big the the full size ones are, which starts off right around at least forty-seven, uh, maybe pushing forty-eight, depending on the model. I think the ones with spring drive, and. Uh, especially ones that can go deeper and have ceramic cases and made of titanium, they tend to be quite a bit larger too, thicker. But anyways, I'm glad they made this. I, I was able, I've was i owned the full-size one, uh, as you might have seen in the past videos. Um, it actually was surprisingly smaller than you'd think at 48 because it's a, it's a round and that's quite wearable at 48 by 48. And it's actually shorter lug-to-lug -lug than it is uh, its width. Um, but uh, yeah, but at 43, it's quite a perfect size. I mean, uh, we'll, we'll just quickly go over the dimensions. So just to measure it. And then actually, we're smaller because on the outside, where it's, you can see, it's, um, it's wider. And then it kind of tapers or gets smaller as it goes to the top. I don't know if you can see that. It's not as wide up here as it is on the, the bottom part. You can definitely see it on this side. This side, maybe because of the crown, is sort of hiding it, but you can sort of see it here too. And um, so, just go to the dimensions real quickly, just to confirm. So, see, it is reading about. Let's see here, let's go from one screw side to the other. Yeah, it's about forty-three, as you can see here. And so, if you actually measure the, like for instance, the bezel, that actually will be let's see closer to. Look at that, 38, 38 and a half almost. So that's, and of course the dial size is even that much more smaller, but we're not measuring dials, but generally you go off of the top surface level of what the visual weight is versus the bottom. Uh, that tends to, you know, this is, this is what kind of is more dominant right up front. So that's why it actually looks and wears smaller than you'd think, even at 43. Um, and the lug to lug, this on the outside, it's um, 43.7 um, or, or it's 43 and a half. But if you actually measure it, like, say, from the actual uh, spring, you know, where the springs bars are pivoting at, it's like about 40 or so. So um, it's quite wearable. And, and the lugs are very close barely there and they just underhang the case too so it actually will curve down and meet and I'll show you in a moment it'll actually fill in the gap pretty well 
uh, even the larger ones do that quite well too. They're actually even more inboard, I think, compared to the, 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 the shroud or this case here. And that's one thing I love about the tuna design. It's so unique. Of course, they're homages, but I would always try to, even though they do cost a bit more, I would always try to get the real thing. Uh, that's just me. If I'm going to go with the Seiko design, I would really want to try to get the actual Seiko model. Though there's some great homages from AliExpress and stuff um, that for hundreds less even. Um, this doesn't look or quite feel the same as having the, the real thing. But, you know, um, some people don't need the real thing. They just want the particular look and design. And I get that. I mean, I own plenty of homage watches before. Um, based off of the, the big R brand. I guess we can't officially say that for some reason. I think people are shying away from seeing it on the videos for some reason. At least maybe if you actually have something that looks like. Okay, I'll say it, the Rolex. Then they say, oh, you can't say it because it's it looks like one, but it isn't. Or I don't even know what, what the, the big deal is. But anyways, um, so this original design, one of many. And uh, if you're going to have a nice dive watch and a trademark or a very uh, original um, design from Seiko, for instance, there's so many. But I always like the, the tuna design. This is so perfectly or well, near perfectly so just so um geometric it's very it's just perfectly round for the most part and it's just very industrial looking i always like i always prefer the shroud with the brush finish like this versus some that have like a high polish and um and there's a fine hairline scratch right there but it's barely noticeable um yeah i mean uh even though this, I think, does this actually have, I'm, I'm kind of all over the place, sorry, I'm just trying to get this done, because uh, it's getting late, and I just want to get in. Let me finish the dimensions. It is uh, actually only about, check this out, uh, I thought it was saying, 12, uh, just under 13 millimeters thick, and that's from the, uh, see the, the flat sapphire is almost leveled with the bezel, but it's actually slightly underneath the level of the bezel, if you can sort of make it out. So it just dips down ever so slightly underneath that level. But as you're measuring from case to case back, not bad at under 13. And um, I still with the NH, or not NH, uh, 4R35 movement, because it's just a date. And uh, if you actually measure the, say like the, the, like this, like the, you're going to, you know, when it's, when you're not, when it's on wrist, you're not going to take in the full measurement because it, the watch sinks into the wrist and uh, it's also can be subdivided depending on how you see it, like the way the cases are cut. And so what you might end up picking up for the actual thickness might be closer to like, say this section here, this midsection, which is about under nine millimeters in the half almost that's just this part the tallest part and then if you sometimes if you see it from the, the thinner part where the uh it's cut out right up here so it allows you to get a grip on the on this quarter or this quarter um it will look even thinner at almost 6.7 so less than seven millimeters like right in here so i mean even less than what was it less than nine that's pretty good. Um, and I'll show it to you on my uh, wrist size, which is less than 7 inches, actually. It's like 6.9, I guess. I could average it out to just under 7 uh, on my left, which I wear it. Uh, let's see. Before I do that, there's anything else I need to talk about. So it's got it's a mix of high polish, obviously. It's got the famous Tsunami Wave. It comes on this uh, nice uh, rubber strap. It's a polyurethane. I can never really, you know, tell which is which, but it's very typical for some of the newer Seiko rubber dive straps. And, uh, of course, they always have the metal keeper. It does look kind of nice. It's, this one's brushed and engraved. Uh, but, in actual, and then the, the buckle is actually nicely milled, actually. I think it's actually milled, too. 
Well, it's kind of folded. I guess this could be considered folded or as part of its milk. I don't know. But definitely the this part of it is. And it's signed, at least on the inside. And um, it's got some texturing here. Which will, you know, give some area for it, for it to breathe on your wrist. And uh, yeah, these are very comfortable. It's a light gray, so I think it suits the watch pretty well. Uh, but this is quite a strap monster too. It can work well on some other... Uh, straps in so check my past what you watch your strap in videos to show what I've shown this on in the past just to get an idea uh, or see my pics on some of the Facebook social media groups the Forsaco and some other ones or check out my Instagram at Krona Craze um, you can see those photos and some short videos of this of this and other watches too 120 click unidirectional rotating, rotating bezel it's pretty typical of Seiko you know the way it sounds and feels there's I would say like in their maybe this is how it feels a, ever so slightly more clickier uh, but overall it lines up pretty good it's maybe if I back you know back turn it to, to really set it in place it may be just slightly to the to the right but oh no it's not too bad and it's just like a slight correction just like that it's not hard it doesn't sit funny and it's not all that easy to turn anyways to knock it out because most of the shroud edges or the the bezel edge is covered by the shroud anyway to protect it and keep it from spinning that you hit it here and it's got a pretty good uh, resistance to it so if you look at that it's pretty pretty well lined up and overall i do find the, uh, the alignment of the chapter ring, which can infamously be misaligned on not just this or a lot of SKXs and just about most of other die models that have a chapter ring such as this style, which is basically a separate piece, which has a surprisingly relaxed tolerance so that it can shift a bit. Overall, if you look at it, I think it looks pretty balanced. For some reason, to my eye... It might be ever so slightly off on the bottom, but I think for the most part, you just kind of just look at it like this pit running through here. This one basically runs through the center of that one, and you kind of just draw an imaginary line that through the center of the balloon pip, the hour marking indexes from there to the center. It basically it's pretty darn well lined up. I can't complain. It's not enough to bug me. And um, I think uh, anybody um, that may have this particular one should be pretty satisfied with it. Um, it's never, I've never looked at it. It's like, oh my God, it looks so off. Uh, no, it's definitely, there's, I've definitely seen a lot worse examples. And this is not too bad coming from the factory. It's got this brushed stainless steel bezel. Um, well, it is kind of brushed, but let's see. But you can see this was Seiko has been doing in a lot of their some of their newer models like the the 62 Master that I had before. Uh, it's got like these fine like almost like record like grooves around the edge. Uh, well, on the surface, so that kind of gives it a matte appearance, but a little bit of a shine too. And if you look closely, you can catch it with that texture. Looks nice. So I think this works pretty well with this. I always like. I can like both. I can like a colored insert of some sort, but I do like it also in stainless steel. And my first re actual tuna was, of course, Marie Master model. I forget the exact reference, but if you look way back um, several years ago, you might see that video. <clears throat> um, I had one that's all stainless steel, but it was high polished. For some reason, that version, uh, Black Dial, didn't have a uh, brushed. Um, but I lived, I got through it with, with it. Um, but this is my preferred finish. It just looks, I don't know. I just like more brushing for a tool watch myself. Uh, what else? And this is kind of like the older style or maybe the original style, um, uh, closer to it of the, you know, tunas themselves. They had more of these round markings, uh, indexes versus like say the previous, uh, generation of monsters, oh no, monsters, tunas, 
uh, they have like something I guess more SKX like in their in their uh, dial or index design. Um, they have like these elongated um, indexes at the three, nine, and six. Still had a triangle here, but then they had a different handset, which were maybe closer to what you might see on like a, on a monster. Uh, it's a fat arrow hand for the hour, and then um, something something similar to this. Um, no, it looks like a rocket hand, so it's a uh, it's a little bit more straighter. But anyways, it looks very close to what you might find on a monster, but. Um, this is pretty cool. This is very distinctive SKX dive style handset right here. And of course, a lot of people actually kind of like the original version of the way they did the tune ends with the, all these round indexes here. Um, they say this is pressed from behind. I don't really care. Um, I just assume it's <laughs> could be applied. It looks like it. Um, the important thing is that they look more 3D. They pop off the dial. They have like a you know, I finished uh, frame edge around them. So under the right lighting conditions, you just catch that all these rings will light up around the um, the, uh, the indexes, which is just a nice effect. It doesn't just look like a flat printed thing. So I'm glad they're starting to do kind of do that more with some of the watches. It just gives it a more premium feel and looks a little less boring than just flat printed but there are some times where just a flat print is kind of cool especially if you want a really raw to watch look um no nonsense that actually kind of works better in its favor it doesn't look as fancy or as maybe even blingy um let's get this on wrist so actually quick watch wrist watch check what i have been wearing today is my fortis Vega f39 I uh, really like this watch. It's on an Erica's original strap trident, which is their gray uh, color. That's what they call it. And then you can always customize, pick a different center stripe. And this is the loom, green loom or loom green um, stripe, which I was trying to match with uh, the way the indexes are. I have this kind of blue, you know, kind of loom look too. It's a really cool watch. I uh, really enjoy it. Anyways, we're not talking about this. Um, Funny enough, though, maybe not so funny, both of these watches I didn't have before going to the wind-up watch show, uh, watch fair from uh, Worn and Wound in San Francisco this year. This is 2022. But uh, having gone there, I saw both of these watches. This was at the Worn and Wound shop. It's on one side of this, you know, the stuff that they sell on the website. And I was glad I was able to get a first-hand look at it. And it left an impression on me. It's like, I was curious about it, but pictures and videos don't really quite do this justice especially trying to view the the dial and what i didn't want to see too much even though this is part of the design was those penguin feet um in the pictures that they show on the website especially it looks very dominant but when i saw it at the show and even right now in person for the most part most of that texture i mean it kind of pops up the video maybe showing it sometimes slightly more than you actually see it but believe me like in real person in front of you in front of your eyes um the feet really do tend to disappear for the most part like you really have to even sometimes try to look for them so on the certain angles if you catch it just right it'll it will kind of pop out which is fine i would say at least 80 85 percent of the time you just get the color, this kind of light blue, icy blue gradient dial with the texturing uh, overall showing through more than, you know, all that plus feet that you see on there. That, that's, that's just kind of a, an after image or something for the most part, uh, which is good. I wanted to hope it kept, it kept more subtle than the pictures would suggest. So um, you ever get a chance to look at it in person yourself, one of these um you'll see what i mean i think you might agree that um it's actually you know pretty nice uh and it's something fun no big deal it's and it's this kind of denotes what kind of special edition this is this is antarctica special edition of course it doesn't say that um and of course these are not limited in numbers but no one does they will have a certain production run and and that'll be it and they'll move on uh, but this this one's pretty cool, and so we'll see this on my 
less than seven inch wrist. Oh my God, almost 20 minutes. Okay, I gotta wrap this up. So, uh, goes on really easy. The only thing I also don't like about this is that sometimes it does, it's so there is a bit of a gap. So sometimes you might find it sliding off and then this will pop out or it could go the other way, right? And then this could move down this way and then you're left with a lot of tongues kind of out too. Uh, so yeah, it's lots of secure and not, not as secure as maybe something a little tighter. And also I kind of wish, I mean, it doesn't bug me too much, but I feel like there should be another keeper or something here. Because sometimes this can feel like, you know, kind of weird that there's nothing. I'm used to having something that comes over right after the buckle to keep it close and tight right after that. And then this comes through and then you have a keeper on this end to keep that the loose end too. So usually I use, I'm used to seeing two, unless you've got a really short strap or really big wrist where you use up the last hole, then maybe this will be down closer and it won't matter as much, if you know what I mean. But uh, overall, um, it's got a nice, you know, the way it's designed, but the way the, this piece, um, <laughs> I'm going to lost for words what that, that part is called right here. Um, but it's like, you know, it's angled and shaped so that it goes into this thick strap and it doesn't end up pushing it out more than it needs to. And it just, just fits right through and hooks on to the buckle and it all kind of flows pretty nicely. Um, so this is pretty nicely done to me. This, the thickness of it looks sturdy and feels good. And this is not bad, but sometimes if your hands, at least mine, my wrist is maybe for some reason really warm or sticky. Uh, as you're trying to put this on, the back side of this metal part can kind of stick to your skin. So as you're trying to pull this across to get it to hold down at the right spot, it may be a little bit like sticking to your skin. If, if anything, sometimes it kind of... As you're doing it, it sort of pinches it in a way right in the inside edge doesn't always happen because my hand like for now it's fine but like maybe when it's warmer or for whatever reason on this sweaty wrist it can get to that part where that kind of sweat it's not slippery it's actually more sticky and then it'll stick kind of weird but anyways um not a deal breaker and you can again this strap monster has got drill lug holes so it's easy to change and this is how it looks like on my 6.9 inch wrists um and it works great you can see it just comes down really good and my friend has uh, another version of this like an older one that's in a, like a more gray gunmetal color that has that gray dial and gray dark gray bezel. it's like a gray and gray kind of look um and they used and they have the day and maybe it's a day date i think on this of the three traditionally um, I forget the model number, but it's one of the older ones, but it's pretty cool too. And, um, uh, yeah, and his, his wrist is like six and a half. And I think you can go even smaller because the lug to lug is so short. And again, these underhang, so it's, it works pretty well. And you can see, hopefully, like even the side profile is quite low profile, flat to the wrist. And doesn't pop up. That's why I like this. It doesn't, not that the full size ones were that you know, unwieldy, but I definitely like the fact that this could be a more compact shape and lower profile and feel and look more like a, I guess, a normal watch size, if you can kind of compare it. I mean, this is a 39 and uh, this is a 43, so big difference, but um, I don't know, it's definitely wearable. And what else would I say about this? Um, it has great luma cores um, on the pip and hands and indexes. Let me quickly turn off the light and let me bump up the ISO so you can hopefully see it better. And I'm going to change the white balance real quickly so it kind of looks closer to what I'm seeing somewhere right around there. Drop the speed down. And there you go, kind of. Let me. Just a quick last. There we go. 
And this does last through the night. If it looks blue, it's not. It's really a green. Let me see if I can make it look closer. Well, it's going to make my skin color look funny. Um, but yeah, if it looks blue here, it's not. It's actually very true green glow. Um, although Seiko does have some nice blue loom. Uh, this is not it. And they even have orange now, uh, which is pretty amazing that they can do that. And it actually lasts and works pretty darn good. Not too far off from their other colors, right? Um, probably not spoon is the green. That's always going to be the brightest of any kind of loom, usually. Uh, unless you've got a really old formula. But for Seiko, uh, no problem. So there you go. Very legible. Um, quite symmetrical, actually, because that you can imagine if the... Um, See if I can drop it. See, well, that date disappears really, so it's very symmetrical. You're going to get all the indexes. So that's the. Let me turn on the light again. So that's the. Um, oh, too bright. Let's turn this back now. And switch the white balance back to what it should be. Somewhere right about there. Okay. So. The date window at the 4.30. Uh, I don't mind. There's better execution than this where um, if a color matches the um, dial better, it might disappear more. But, I mean, Seiko doesn't typically do color matching of any other date wheels. It's either going to be white or black. Um, usually white. So, in this case, between the two, hmm... I think because most of the dial is going to be on the lighter side than dark, there's kind of questionable around the very edges. Um, this would probably, I think this is better than going black. Um, yeah. But I don't mind. The way I see it, you know, the date window is either going to, in normal daylight, it's going to throw off the symmetry in some way. Uh, this case, either here, but if you did a three, traditionally you'd lose the pip. So, you know, it wouldn't be perfect anyways. Like, you're going to lose that symmetry. You won't have a you have a missing loom pip usually on this side with where a date window could be at alternatively. And, um, yeah, you might lose out there. But when you turn off the lights, at least... This will retain symmetry, whereas if it was at the three, um, you still have a missing marker over there. So at least out of the two lighting scenarios, daytime and night, at least um, one out of two, you can get some symmetry, right? Um, whereas if it was at date one at the three, well, you basically don't have it at daytime, and you also don't really quite have it. When the lights go out either but i mean that's nitpicking but sometimes you know it's all these little details that add up that make a, a watch look cooler or i don't know just generally look better for you than than not at least for me it does so screw down crown again 200 meters water resistance but then i don't think i mentioned that earlier um again i'm kind of over a place <laughs> it's actually kind of late for me i just want to get this done so first position would be to change the date, but I don't know if I'm in the red zone. So I always, but you can hack it and then I would advance the time. That's how it flips. And look, it's starting to change. So this is midnight. Yeah, it looks like it changed a little early. I find that in practice, when you're actually wearing it, it may not, like if you're doing this and it flips right around 10 or 5 um, before midnight, when you wear it, it could actually be a little bit different position when it actually flips over. But anyways, I can't remember what it was. And this movement, it's been working pretty good. It's been, uh, I think I got this, seems to be averaging out at about roughly plus four seconds a day, maybe just a hair under that sometimes. And uh, yeah, so there's that. I'm still at 10 a.m. I can just, I can, in the first position after, you know, you just, uh, just go this way to advance the date. 
and that's it there's no uh, date or day like monday tuesday wednesday thursday but if you did and on a 4 or 36 moment you rotate it the other way to flip the the day but this isn't so once you're done you just put it in um i usually try to back rotate the crown till i feel the part where the threads just kind of clear and then it kind of you feel it kind of drop a little bit and then you know that the gear should just screw down good and tight without cross fear of cross threading because the they basically moved into a position where they can uh, make sh you know you know lock into their threads without uh, cross threading. Uh, anything else I can say? I feel like I'm missing something. Uh, well, just quickly, I should have said this in the beginning, but it, it comes in this box, typical white Seiko on the outside box, nothing to show. But um, I don't know, I think the instructions were inside because some reason they don't fit in that space, which they sometimes cut out at the bottom of the box. I think this is you know, too wide. Uh, so I think this is inside the box. Which is fine, but this is at least something special, a little bit different. It's got this blue trim, and it's a little bit wider, um, and you know, it's a little bit more nicer than your typical Seiko box, which is usually probably just going to be another white cardboard box that you just pop open. And I think it's usually a gray or like a beige kind of faux suede lining. But this just comes like this. Save the ocean. Um, on the pillow, I still have the hang tags. I, I can pretty much keep everything. And, um, yep. And this this does not have dia shield, dia shield, the scratch resistant coating, unlike the Marine Masters, which they, they do have that, which is fine. I don't really abuse my watches too much. And, uh, for as much as I've worn it, I haven't worn super a lot, but enough um, where it's still holding up pretty good. So, um, yep. Yeah, well, uh, for around, what do these run? I forget. Well, when I got mine, which was just only a few months ago, because it's around mid, just past mid-September, and when was the watch show? Back in April or May? Or was it June? Pretty sure it's May. Uh, so it's only been like probably less than half a year, but uh, uh, yeah, they, they they got them for about, and they were selling it for around um, four something, uh, maybe somewhere under five hundred. So yeah, they run between four to five usually, but depending on where you shop around, you could get it under that, so maybe three something. Um, which is a great deal. I mean, especially with the prices of a lot of the prospects uh, watches from um, Seiko these days, um, around, hovering around thousand. Usually on a bracelet, it'll go over that uh, on a rubber strap of some sort. It might be just under that in the nine hundred dollar range for the most part. Uh, so yeah, that's not using a six R thirty five, which is those those ones will with that cost thousands of dollars or so. <clears throat> But uh, the 4R35 or 36 movement as well is pretty tried and true. It can't go wrong. Easy to service. Hell, I mean, if you're up to it, just buy a new movement and swap it out um, if it ever goes bad. And uh, probably might be less than the cost of uh, sending it to Watchmaker if you have the confidence to take off everything and put it back onto a new movement. Um, but yeah, servicing for these things should be pretty relatively inexpensive and uh easy to do because it's uh, a movement from Seiko that's been around for quite a while. Um, just to mention, but just obviously screw down case back. Uh, something else I was going to mention. Yeah, so yeah, good value for, for what you get in here. It's limited edition, which isn't crazy expensive. Sometimes some of these, uh, they had a nice, actually a Zimby version of this I just saw of uh, this, you know, this kind of a uh, mini tuna. Uh, it's got some white and orange accents, white dial. It's pretty cool. 
but uh yeah it's almost more than it's not almost it is more than double the price of these almost a thousand dollars for for that one but they are limited edition and those are usually the zimbi stuff i believe are like thailand exclusives um if not jdm but they're yeah they're very they seem to be very collectible and generally hold their value pretty good they have like put out a new zimbi version i think at least once a year if not perhaps a little bit more than that um but yeah that one's pretty nice i just heard a random rob mention it and i kind of googled it real quickly and said oh i did not know they had this uh but yeah i don't know if i want to spend i like that enough to spend uh basically almost a grand on on this particular one that's why i like these for the most part this range of watches uh is that uh you know you usually can get them from under 500 uh at least in the mid fours if not if you look around maybe in the mid threes um for a new one too there is no sapphire but i've never had any problem with heart lex so i think it's plenty fine and again it just sits underneath the uh the bezel so it's kind of recessed so direct contact and scratching will be pretty hard to get it isn't domed and it's again you'll probably scratch the bezel before that happens but um yeah i think uh uh this is definitely worth it um and uh i hope that uh adds uh, some more information for you if you're ever curious about this particular watch or something like it so uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next.